Hello, Kerbal Knights, and welcome to An Engineer Just Talking. And if you're new to the series, this is a series of me trying to improve my commentary skills and uh, just talking. <laughs> That's it. If you, wanna, if you want me to, to answer anything, just leave it in the comments below. Any questions or anything you want to know. <laughs> Perhaps a piece of information or just let me know I'm doing excellent. I'm improving my commentary skills. Anyway, let's get on with this. And I think I'll start off with the bad news. Okay, so things have to be done. I've been procrastinating, procrastinating if I can get that correctly. And things have to be done around the house. I have things to do in the back garden, so videos may be short or not, not may not have many videos. I'll keep on doing this one because I want to improve my commentary. But while we're doing that, let's play this game and blast off. Now please note that I messed up at some point. I messed up a recording, so thing I lost some stuff, so I'm re-recording this. Okay, so piece of note. Please note that if may, um, videos may be low on the... Well, we may not have many videos coming out. And that's bad because I love doing those tutorials as well. Let's do a mystery go here so you can get a little science. Nah, nothing worth keeping. What I'll do by here, I'll use this actually to get into high orbit. I've done a low orbit, so I'll get to high um, suborbital hop. This one. Okay, so in this series, I'll be improving my commentary by talking about space news, about Kerbal Space Program, and answering questions and comments from you guys. So let's start off with space news. Okay, first thing I want to grab your attention with is a space probe sent up there by JAXA, which is, no, it's not some dodgy thing people they're actually the Japanese space station was it so do not be alarmed and the cool thing about this probe which is called the if I can pronounce it correctly Hayabusa Hayabusa 2 probe if I got that right Hayabusa 2 yes and it's number two meaning that they were they originally was a number one and what this probe has been going on to is it's going to intersect an asteroid second engine engaged and what they want to do is do a sample return mission. Now on the first probe, they actually did return a sample, so yay! However, the mechanism that was meant to get the sample return failed. And it only got a little bit of dust from returning. So, oh. So they decided to send another mission because of the success of the last mission you know they thought they could overcome things like they had problems with the first mission like one of the reaction wheels failed so they had trouble controlling the probe but they did eventually return a sample to the earth so i'd say that's a success but anyway they let's talk about this probe it was launched in december 2014 and it's going to arrive at its target in 2018 and it's it's arriving at an asteroid which they've nicknamed Ryugu and the actual asteroid name is 1999 I assume that's the year it was discovered it's 1999 JU3 so if you want to look that up perhaps you can have a look at its orbit I haven't looked at its orbit but I know it's in near earth orbit because it makes it easier to re for a return mission for returning the probe uh, samples oh, let's go a bit Ooh, we're in space space to a crew port. Nothing to report. Robert Materials Bay. Nothing to report. Okay, we'll wait until we get extremely high. Okay, so they they nicknamed the asteroid Ryugu, and that is from a Japanese folklore. Now, what was it was from a folklore where it was an undersea dragon's palace. Now, a fisherman went to the undersea dragon's palace and brought back a treasure chest. And that's what the probe is going to do. That's why they nicknamed the asteroid Ryugu. Because they're going to bring a treasure trove of information from the asteroid. Because there's not just going to take samples. 
it's got a couple of things that it can do. First off is testing new technologies and like the advanced ion drive which gives it Okay, we're up at 7,793 uh, kilometers up, so I'll leave that go up. I'll do it at fast forward time because I don't think you want to watch this go slowly. Okay, so what they're going to bring back is a sample, the, but it's got four landers on there as well to land on the surface of that asteroid. And now this is cool because one of those landers was created, was built by Germany in association with the French or France, French Space Agency. I don't know how, what they're called. I assume they're part of ESA, so ESA, I suppose. And they're going to land that. I think the name of that is called, let me have like the notes, Mascot, Mobile Asteroid Surface Scout. And what's cool about these landers, as I take a goo sample, is that they, let's keep that, is that they have mechanisms on it so they can hop around on the asteroid and go to different places. Now, I'm not too sure about what each lander has or what each lander does, but I know the mascot one is going to be just scouting around. It's not going to take samples or anything. I assume it's got cameras and other instruments to measure certain things. But also the probe, Ryu, uh, Ryu, that's the asteroid. Also the probe, the main probe itself, is got has got two impactors that it's going to send down, impact the asteroid. They have to do some complex maneuvering that will enable it to uh, steer clear of any debris. And then it's going to come back for another pass and it's going to collect samples. At least that's what I think. That's what I read up that it's going to do. So the idea is it's the main probe is going to hop around, collect samples, and those impactors are to uh, uncover material under the surface. So let's do a crew report. I've been up this high before. Okay. I think we have enough charge yes we do but only for one transmission yeah mysterious go up here may oh 15 yeah and we can also do an eva come on bob you thought eva of science okay and we want to do observe materials bay keep that Now I'll do I'll get Bob off. And hey Presto, we can maneuver. And I'll sure I'm sure yeah, collect data. Move data. And you see I've got a couple of here, I'm gonna need a couple of it. And we'll, we'll no longer have any such science in there. Or no one won't be able to reuse it, so it's gonna be dumped. Okay, the only thing left to do is detach that. I'll wait for a turn. Okay, so what I was up to? Yes, they're going to be... It's going to arrive at the asteroid in 2018. It's going to send down those four uh, landers. Then it is also going to be sending those two impactors, collecting samples and returning them. Now they have gone for 10 minutes talking about that. I also want to talk about one space mission. I'll quickly go over this because I went over it on the first episode. And that is the Juno spacecraft. That was launched in 2011. Whee. Let's point retrograde. So the capsule doesn't burn up. That was launched in 2011 and it's going to get to Jupiter in 2016 or in August and I am really looking forward to that because I love the gas giants. If you remember the Galilean probe which was sent to Jupiter and it took pictures of all the moons and everything, this one doesn't have the luxury of getting all that information, um, 
high resolution pictures it's got a simple camera on there but that's going to be open to the public to use now I don't mean that every Joe blogs can say what you want from it and hopefully the ablator will protect us yeah we're good dropping in 1000 after you're under 1000 on the surface speed of Kirby you know you're gonna be fine check the parachute until we're safe to deploy But the difference with Juno mission is that they're going to send it into a polar orbit around Jupiter and it's going to be using its instrument, which is an infrared camera, I assume, microwave uh, telescope or, or instruments. And it's also got gravitational and magneto sensors and they're going to be trying to find out the internal structure of the planet that, and that's the reason why it's going into polar orbit because if they go into an equatorial orbit it'll only get the magnetic sphere around the sides what they want is a north-south magnet sphere and that'll tell what it's made of now there are some theories out there that is actually a large diamond in the center of Jupiter now I'm not sure how accurate that could be or whether it'd be true It'd be awesome if they found out if it was. There's no way for us to get it. But the more popular theory, or the most accurate one, as I recover our vessel and get the science back, is that this full, the pressure is so high and there's hydrogen at the center and we have a core of liquid hydrogen. There may be a rocky core there. That may be how Jupiter first formed. I've got 109 science, oh, excellent. See, see if we can use that. You can see I've uncovered the first two tech trees, tiers. Get the launch clamp stability enhancers. Now I think we can make I think I'll unlock that. Not more for the control, but for... I, I really want the uh, information. Because I find that some information isn't available. Or may not be true at the moment from the updates. But you don't get all the information from Kerbal Engineering Redux that you do have with MechJeb as well. Some have good and some have bad ones. So, yeah. Anyway, and what have we got? Ah, oh, we've got no more science. We could have had batteries and probe cores instead. Anyway, let's go plan a second mission. Okay, what can we do next? I suppose we've got external decouplers. We could go to the man and fly by the man. I'll use the same setup. Let's see the couplers. So yeah, that's one thing I'm looking forward to, is to finding out this internal structure of Jupiter. Now I don't want to be too much on it because it'll be unstable. 30s on there, I could use right, you get 5,000 for that. I put these huge art solutions on here. 5,000 Okay, so but this will give us more control. So thrust to weight ratio, when you're building a rocket, you have to make sure that your thrust to weight ratio is not too high or too low from launch. You can see we've got high thrust to weight ratio. It'll increase to 3.9. We can control it if we if I reduce thrust limit here. Oh no. Yeah, that's going to be thrust to rate ratio at 9, 3.9. That's going to be extreme on launch. So rather than risk it, I'm going to put some gentle boosters on there. Okay. Will that get us to the map? I'm not sure. 
organize that. Well, that reduces that. Um, so, uh, right, back to Space News. Okay, that's all I got on Space News. I was going to go over the dev notes, but I've had a couple of comments. And, and well, I'll go briefly over it. They're not releasing version 1.1. No! I, was, I want that multi-threading. <laughs> no, really, I really want that multi-threading. I'm not too bothered about the updates. They've done tweaks on 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, they've been introducing contextual contracts, um, but I'm not playing Korea, so it's not you no know, use to me. And let's see, oh, we got containers here. No, I'll I'll try to aim for a man flyby. I think. So we'll do that. Probably won't get a man flyby. Let's lower these. We can use these. Enough. I don't need to do that either. That's one thing. Have I got struts? No fuel ducts. No fuel ducts. I got struts though, so there's no need to be. Let's apply our struts. And basic. And some nose guns. And launch is well the answers. Let's go launch this, but let's swap out Kerbal. Upcoming, let's... Her lock. Let's get Valentina on there. And launch. Okay, so what they're improving on... They're releasing 1.0.5, which is a bug fix and some feature inclusions. Because they don't see the reason why they have to delay the features when the features are done. But the update to Unity 5.1 and all others and staging is incorrect. Okay, I've spotted that. Is that and launch? Oh. I don't want to keep the thrust weight ratio about two. On the way up, that gives us a. Ah, that's that's the theory. That's my theory that it gives us the nice acceleration. We don't get the aerodynamic effects, therefore we're not traveling too fast. Okay, so you've got contextual. Going back to dev notes. Sorry, you've got contextual contracts, and we're losing control. Abort! 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 abort. Uh, should wait when that's on it. Abort! 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 abort. Zero materials bay. Keep. Not that we can keep it. Well, I suppose we could. Anyway, and they're going to be doing bug fixes in thermal improvements so your ships won't overheat. They've got new parts. Poor, uh, well, the new part, I suppose, one thing I am looking forward to 1.2.5. Oops, I wanted to keep that, damn it. Didn't restage. Okay, the one thing I'm looking forward to is the shuttle engines. And that means you'll be able to create a proper shuttle, space shuttle. Recreate the NASA space shuttle. Because you'll have the proper engines which have the high gimbal. I not didn't look at it, but hopefully they have the 10 degree tilt or control the space shuttle had. That would be awesome to recreate that properly. Other than that, there's just fixes, I think. Now, there may be something I'm missing, but I want to get under the comments. Okay, first comment. 
to recover a vessel. And get a volunteer coming back safely. Right, this is from Vera67. One of the reasons is comic goes, one of the reasons I'm doing YouTube is to get more comfortable public speaking. While playing a game, I really like making it. While playing a game, I really like to make it a bit easier. It's not really working for me, but I don't think so. Looking at your videos, Virik67, you have improved quite a bit. Now, don't shortchange yourself because the number of subscribers has increased. And the only reason why mine have increased is because the tutorials, I assume, because, yeah, it's like with Kurt J. Mack. He gained a lot of subscribers because of his Farlands and Bust episodes. He decided to go to Farlands and once he changed, decided to change it into charity, things improved and... Well, he got a lot of subscribers and look where he is now. It's a full-time job for him. But I'm not looking to do a full-time job and I assume you're not either, at least at the moment. Let's put some winglets on this thing. Four of them on there. And I, what I can do here. We can give ourselves a bit better boosting. Was improved the delta v slightly and you'd ha if you if we had fuel decks we could do it a lot better and i suppose what i could do change that stage there give ourselves some extra winglets or extra control Hey presto, I think we're ready. Let's go to launch and try again. Uh, first off some struts. Yes, I'm just messing with this and trying to... Ah, let's make it a bit tidier. So as I said with this, to with this series, I'm trying to improve my talking skills, my commentary. Cause I'm a bit of an introvert. I don't normally go out talking to people, so yes. So that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, he also mentions that I'd love a telescope suitable for viewing and photographing planets and galaxies. Nothing so big, it seems it needs a hut in a garden. But big enough for the wow factor. Now, if you want to get a telescope, first things first. Do not get a cheap one. Now, I'm not sure about the prices these days, but I've got a, I've got a six-inch reflector telescope. I've hardly used it, but I suppose that's my fault. But what I suggest is try to find some group that you could go out with. Because what you can do is join astronomy clubs and whatnot. I think I don't have. And they can help you out. Or even just find one for advice. Viewing stars directly is awesome. He's also put a link in there. I'll put this in the description below. Whoa, don't tell the floor. No, 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 no. We're losing control. Ah. Ah, this is why I'm trying to. <laughs> My commentary. 
been a while since I tried to do this without all the tools. And this should be easy. Yeah, that's what you get from trying to talk and do things at the same time. You're not concentrating on one thing, you're trying to concentrate on another, so I'm, that's another thing I'm trying to improve. So yeah, and the book he's on about is The Stars, A New Way to View Them. And it looks like it's an oldish book, but it's been revamped, updated all the information. See if we can save this. We'll keep that. Keep that. Good. I'll zoom it back because I think we can get some in the water. And he also goes on as a topic, what do you think about the Raspberry Pi or a similar microcomputer? How odd the term has come full circle. And what he means by that, a microcomputer used to be a BBC computer you could put on your desktop. Now you don't think of a microcomputer these days as if you haven't got, if it doesn't fit in your pocket, it's probably not a microcomputer. I'm going to revert this. Because I'm not concentrating on it. No, this is too heavy for its own good, I think. Although I suppose it should work if I concentrate on flying it properly. What I'm going to do here has extra control. No. Alright, I thought it was a large one. So what do I think of a microcomputer, especially the Raspberry Pi? He goes on to say that you can use it for a task controller, or you could use it for a KSP de uh, controller, or you could set a control pad to control your game. Now that would be awesome, and a Raspberry Pi was set up to launch and try again. This time, let's do it properly. You can set up the Raspberry Pi to do almost anything. Like some students set it up to do videos and find images from the edges of space by sending it up on a on the balloon. I thought that was awesome. I must use all the rockets. Still do it slightly. So yeah, I think it's worth it. It works. And it's if you're young enough and you can get a Raspberry Pi computer, it's good to learn from. Yeah, I think it's awesome. For someone like me, maybe not so, but it's a good learning tool to learn to use and I know how to do things. And there's awesome things you can do with it as so, well, even if you're not just use it for learning. You could use it as a media entertainment system, as he's also said to you. I'm almost out of time, so let's talk about, let's go to another comment, that one says a handy tip, you can schedule your videos and take notes of information you need, that's what I'm trying to do, I've put this on my Android pad and I've got it in front of me with the comments, so and he says I'm doing quite well, so thank you very much on that, take another comment, and he was, uh, sorry if I put your name, I'm trying to go ship with control list of craft. Saksham Solanki, I think Solanki. Sorry if I put your name on. I'm, I'm terrible at foreign languages. Although I suppose my language is foreign, so. Right, comments from Shane Wilson. First off, which is a comment. You didn't EVA on the launch pad. How dare you not EVA on the launch pad? He's on about getting science and that from easy to reach places. Okay, well...
Uh, the problem with this, we're using too much fuel too quickly. I want the fuel dags. And we can't spam slayers, I'll keep that because it's 2.3 slayers. Get rid of them. So yeah, don't worry, I've been thinking about it and it's just things that I miss because I'm trying to play the game. Trying, I was trying to talk about things off the calf. It's not easy as some people think you make it out to be. Concentration. It's something you have skill you have to learn. Okay, so and yours goes, why don't why don't you use heat shields when going in low orbits? I tend to. Normally if I can put a heat shield on it, I will. He goes on to say I tend to do so because it tend to over engineer stuff. There's no such thing as open engineering. I usually use three shoots, the very best, on anything more than a single capsule. Which is good. One opening at 750 meters, give or take, and at least two opening at 50 meters to do the final slowdown. I never thought of doing that, that would be awesome. To try out for me. <laughs> Ditch that stage. I'll get into orbit. Or he's asked, am I getting overboard with the heat shields? No, I don't think you are. There's no such thing as over-engineering. There's only under-engineering. At least that's my theory. Because if you're over-engineering, I think NASA go to extremes to engineer things. Like the space probe. <laughs> Especially the space probes, because the extreme environments in space, you're trying to get into an environment which is hostile. So you need to prepare for everything. It's the same with Kerbal Space, where I assume the environment's not hostile, but if you're re-entering the atmosphere from this height, I think heat shield may be not necessarily, but it will help a lot. He also says, he also asks, any movies coming out that you're interested in? Star Wars, the Mars one. I actually went to see The Martian the other week. Awesome film. A couple of gripes with it, like the Iron Man part. I won't do any spoilers. You know, some things like that, which I'm a bit too. You know, that I don't think that was realistic. That was more Hollywood, I think. And but I am looking forward to the Star Wars films. This, um, I suppose I'm not sure on the names. I'm looking forward to the Superman versus Batman film. Just because it's a fight that I've read about in comics. Something I would love to actually see in a movie. It's one of those things like, if Godzilla was fighting such and such, who would win? It's like <laughs> being like a kid again. And finally, he asks, what are your thoughts on using lead-free solder? Now, if you wonder what he's on about, they've changed the code. Um, on soldering. Solder, which is used to solder bits on a circuit board, the, the components on a circuit board, are used to be used lead. And that's harsh for the environment. So if you want to chuck your old fridges or electronic goods, TVs and that, it had lead solder, that would get into the environment. Poisoning the planet, our home planet. Now, lead-free solder was to solve that. However, the using lead-free solder is a lot harder. It has a higher melting point, and it smells worse than lead solder, even though inhaling lead is worse for you than lead-free solder. However, there's some funny things with lead-free solder. Now, there have been reports, and I'm sure NASA have been on top of this, that lead-free solder started crystallizing and causing short on some satellites, causing them, you know, out of control or something like that. So I assume they've solved it by using different materials, but yeah, lead free solder brought its own problems, but let's think about this. We're stopping poisoning the atmosphere, so 
anything to do with that, keeping our planet alive, I think would be awesome. Now, there were other comments, but I'll think I'll get to them. I'll, I'll do one more. Jaco. Uh, Jaco922279. Jaco I would like more of these videos. It allows me to focus on more part matters while listening to you and also learn your opinions and thought on similar interests. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not sure how important my thoughts are not. <laughs> when you think your own thoughts, sometimes you think that, uh, why would anyone else want to know all this about me? You know, I'm nothing special. Yes, I play a game, I learned engineering, I uh, work for work in electronics. I'm an electronic engineer, by the way. So I work on circuits, that's like, like putting a TV and all things like that. I do a variety of products, but I'm not going to go into what in my job, just in case they get wind of it. And people have been sacked because of that, so I'm leaving that out to the loop at the moment. But yeah, um, thank you for that. And have we got any other... No, actually, that was all the comments. Uh, yeah, Jayco92279. And, uh, oh yeah, Shane Wilson also says at the end, I understand the whole introverted thing. I missed this. I'm getting used to speaking. One benefit you have is that your voice is decent to listen to, which is always a big thing. Uh, <laughs> my thoughts on that. Well, when you listen to yourself on a tape or on a recording, you don't really think so. And now I've got a nice decent mic, or half decent I'd say, which is a Blue Yeti. It's not studio quality, but it's close to studio quality. There's a nice clarity to it, some background noise to it. I'm trying to work that out, always worried that my breathing may come through and things like that. But I don't think of my voice as a pleasant one to listen to. Now, I've been adding intonation to it like I have been doing here, but because I, I used to talk on a monotone voice and wasn't sure on how to approach a video. <laughs> but uh, no, you don't think of that when you're uh, commentating. And it's hard to keep up the intonation. Like, I know I fail sometimes. And it's something I'm trying to improve upon. See if we can get some more EVA data. Oh. Uh, well, I suppose what we can do is board. Do you update and get some more science from another biome? So yeah, you don't think about your voice when you're listening to it, you're always embarrassed, you know, thinking, oh, do I sound like that? Because the bone's in your head. <laughs> you can hear your voice in your head. And it's uh, always disconcerting. Anyway, I'm going to deorbit this. Well, I have deorbited it. Deorbited it. And I'm going to say, I'm Orbiter. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the comments. Anything you want to know, or questions about the game, or space news, or anything else you want to ask, or just comment about, let me know in the comments below, because this has gone on for about 40 minutes, and it's a bit longer, I was, I did plan to these uh, 20 minutes, but, uh, oh, well, it's 40 minutes. So let's land this and end it, end it all the ground. Let's see if we can do Mystery Goo while the up taps you a bit. Report, nothing to report. I'll reset one of those goo canisters when we land and get more from that. 
Or I'll sign off by here. I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. Just talking.